Hello and welcome to The Album Man. Today I'm going to be finally going through my top 50 favourite albums of 2017. So in this first part we're going to be covering 50 until 26. So we're not going to go spend too much time on each album. There's a load of awesome albums here so I hope you check some of them out. At number 50 we have Further Side by The Nova Collective. This is a jazz fusion prog metal supergroup with people such as Dan Briggs of Between the Buried and Me, Richard Heschnell of Haken, and some of the guys from Trio Scapes. To describe it, I guess I'd say it's, I mean, it's, it's an instrumental album, is, is something to note, and it's a pretty fun, proggy ride. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart, it is some pretty intense jazz fusion prog metal instrumentals, but if that's your jam, then further side by the Nova Collective. And number 49, Chuck by Chuck Berry, who sadly passed away in 2017. This was released just after his death, but was... You know, it was not a posthumous album in proper, I mean, it was made while he was still alive. And how a 90-year-old man could record something that makes him sound like he's still in his 20s or at least his early 30s, I have no idea. This, is, honestly, is one of the greatest feats of the year, and the production in particular is just perfection. It has, you know, some modern sensibilities, but while also having that real 50s rock and roll spirit about it. The only thing that keeps this sound a bit lower is it does have some real cheesiness, stuff like Jamaica Moon, which is just terrible, I've got to say. And while well, half the riffs may just be variations on Johnny Be Good, the guy was 90 and this is fun as hell. At 48, Common as Light and Love Are Red Valleys of Blood by Sun Kill Moon. What a name for an album. So this is Mark Kozalak, he's a kind of a, I would say, anti-folk singer, songwriter, and while this is his most long-winded and bloated effort to date, it is a very long double album. I think it clocks in at a good two hours, and a few bands aside from Swans can really pull that off. This has some nuggets of wonderful storytelling, and certainly some different in, um, instrumentation for Mark using synths and the like. At number 47, we have Carry Fire by Robert Plant. This is an ethereal, dreamy, world music inspired album with minimalist electronica and it's, it's definitely a diverse and interesting journey. I mean, if you haven't listened to many of Plant's solo albums, you know, you're only familiar with him from Zep, then yeah, don't, don't expect this to sound anything like um, Zep, maybe some stuff from Zep 3 at the most, but Plant's voice just sounds incredible here. Really does just... It's, he's got such an ethereal voice on this album. The soundscapes created are just beautiful. This is one you just want to lie back to and just let it wash over you. Um, check out tracks like the title track, Carry Fire and May Queen. At number 46, we have Reflections of a Floating World by Elder. Is it just some solid, I guess, stonery, sludgy doom metal? I really loved their album Law back in 2015. Don't think this is quite as good, but it does continue their sound rather nicely. At number 45, Lotta Sea Lice by Kurt Vile and Courtney Barnett. This is a collaboration between two artists who have featured on this list before. Um, they both featured on my 2016 list, I think. <clears throat> and this is a really cool album. It's dreamy with really sharp, witty lyricism. It's the lyricism that really gets us. I mean, I love Courtney Barnett's lyricism. I think it's very funny. Um, Kurt Viles can also be, you know, quite cool, very chill, laid back. And they've got a great chemistry together. Their voices mesh really nicely together, the way they take it in turns for verses or come together. It's a really nice album. And number 44, Nightbringers by the Black Dahlia Murder. <clears throat> Time for something a bit heavier. This is just classic mellow death. It's short, heavy, to the point. One of my favourite modern death metal bands. Uh, it doesn't do much that you haven't already heard the Black Dahlia Murder do. It's much of the same, but when they've got their formulas down pretty nicely at this point. And number 43, we have by far one of the strangest albums I had this year. The Great Fish by Squalus. The name alone is bizarre, um, let alone when I tell you that it is an avant-garde metal Jaws-themed album. Yeah, you had that right. This is a Jaws-themed album. Now, funnily enough, I've actually never seen the film Jaws. 
Yeah, I, I know. But even so, um, all the lyrics are taken from the dialogue of Jaws, I believe. And that, that, that's quite bizarre. I mean, to have a concert album based on a, a film about a shark is, is odd without a doubt. Musically, this is kind of sludge metal, but yet yeah, also with organ and synth, and then kind of crushingly heavy, sludgy vocals too. This is a strange album, but the riffs are meaty, and it's certainly a unique experience. And number 42, Long Way Back From The Moon by Galactic Cowboys. I'd never heard of this band before uh, 2017, but apparently they've been going for some time since the 90s, and I guess they're, they're catchy American metal with some Beatles-esque almost vocal harmonies, honestly. And this is their first album in over a decade, and yeah, I'm pretty glad I heard of them now. At number 41, we have Thrice Woven by Wolves in the Throne Room. I mean, Wolves in the Throne Room, Canada's best atmospheric black metal band, probably Canada's best black metal band. And they're just one of the best atmospheric black metal bands out there. So if you like that type of style and you're missing your Agalock, as I certainly am, uh, this is a really solid album. I don't think it does anything super special, I gotta say, but it's a really solid album. Number 40, an album you might have expected to be higher, Emperor of the Sand by Mastodon. This is one that won a lot of Album of the Year awards, a shocking amount, because this really didn't click with me quite as much as I hoped. I mean, Jaguar God and Show Yourself are great, in particular Jaguar God, but Show Yourself is just so damn catchy. Mastodon can do that kind of almost poppy rock thing quite well at times. But still, this really didn't click too much for me at first, at least. Um, I just found it a static uh, continuation of Once More Around the Sun, which I enjoyed. Um, but also I just found the production to be lacking, uh, lacking a lot of dynamic variation. It almost felt like a victim of the loudness war to me. Um, yeah, certainly to my ears. Everything in the mix was a little limp, flat. Yeah, still, I mastered on... They're a brilliant band, and this album does kick ass. It's a very enjoyable listen from end to end. It's just not quite what I hoped for. Number 39, Monochrome by Danny Kavanagh. Now, I reviewed this album, so if you want to know my full thoughts on it, check it out. But Danny Kavanagh is the lead guitarist and songwriter of the band Anathema. And this is a really atmospheric, melancholic album and a, a wonderful voyage through Danny's psyche. And number 38, we have The Microtonal Flying Banana by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. The first of the albums in 2017 to make it onto this list. This just has instant classic tunes like Rattlesnake, Open Water, Nuclear Fusion, and the strange microtonal guitars, which is when you take, say, the frets of the guitars and effectively almost split them in half to create these microtones. Um, that fused with their trademark rhythmically tight double drumming just fits together nicely. I do think they have better work to offer in 2017, but Microtonal Flying Banana is a fine, fine place to start. Number 37, Medusa by Paradise Lost. This is slower and doomier than the last album, because Paradise Lost, they return to their kind of death metal roots, or death doom roots, I guess, um, with the album before this. I can't remember the name of now, but I think it was back in 2013. And Medusa, yeah, it's slower and doesn't quite hit me in the same way as, as the last one. And number 36, another Doom album. This is Heartless by Paul Bearer. Fountains of Burden was one of my favourite Doom albums of, of the decade, and Paul Bearer just continue in fine form. I saw them live at Damnation Festival and they were great. This has sludgy, doomy riffs, melodic tendencies. Uh, doesn't expand too much on foundations for me, but solid album. Giz Modrome's self-titled album, Giz Modrome, is another of the weirder side of albums in 2017. This is a supergroup consisting of well, Stuart Copeland of The Police and Adrian Bellew of King Crimson, along with um, a member of uh, Premiata Fonniera Marconi, PFM, and I think the Level 42 bassist? Yeah, it's a strange supergroup combination, and it's a weird album. I guess I'd describe it as almost Zappa-like, um, certainly in its lyrics, and yeah, with a complex, diverse, proc instrumentation. It's a weird one, but if you like Adrian Bellow, you liked his stuff in the 80s with King Crimson, 
than it's worth checking out. Number 34, Luciferian Towers by Godspeed You Black Emperor. I read one review saying that this was the most pointless Godspeed album yet, and in many ways I agree, this doesn't expand upon their formula, and is almost unnecessary. Um, in the discography which has shown a linear progression over time, with certain ups and downs, this doesn't seem to do anything different. But at the end of the day, Godspeed is so damn beautiful, and Boss's Hang is just a wonderful suite, one of the best songs of the year, um, with the other tracks, especially... Th yeah, this is the problem. I mean, some of the tracks do just let down, like uh, Undoing a Luciferian Tower doesn't do much for me, and that's why the, the lower rating for one of my, well, my favourite post-rock band, and I still have an undying love for what these guys do, but Luciferian Towers wasn't quite what I'd expected. Number 33, Heavy Fire by Black Star Riders. When did this band disappoint? If you like Finn Lizzy and want basically a modern day Finn Lizzy, this Black Star Riders are them. Um, Ricky's voice is killer. You get what you expect, start to finish. Number 32, Arve by Venom Inc. So this is basically Kronos and, uh, no, it's not Kronos, it's Mantas. Mantis and um, the drummer, I can't remember his name, but yeah. The guitarist and the drummer of Venom without the singer bassist, Kronos, um, putting together a group with uh, another vocalist whose name eludes me right now, but this is a great album. It's fast, it's very Venom, if you like black metal, welcome to hell. This is gonna be up your alley. Honestly, it's the best kind of new album style album of the year. The vocalist is better than Kronos's nowadays, I'd argue. You've seen them live, they're pretty tight, and yeah, this surprised me of how good it was. Uh, maybe lasted a tiny bit too long, but very strong album. Number 31, we have King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard yet again with sketches from Brunswick East. My second favourite of Gizzard's albums of 2017, this is a jazzy, chilled out collaboration with Mild High Club, which is basically just a one man project, with a name taking from Miles Davis's album Sketches of Spain. This is very different to anything the Gizzard had done before. Because My Old High Club really adds a certain smoothness, a certain jazziness to their sound, which goes really nicely with their double drumming, highly textured psych sound. It's the calmest and most tranquil you'll probably ever hear the gizzard, and it works wonders for them. And number 30, Out of the Voiceless Grave by the Lurking Fear. This is a supergroup again who features members and ex-members from At The Gates and other Gothenburg style bands and has At The Gates vocalist Thomas. Basically, if you like At The Gates, you will like this. If you like that type of killer, Gothenburg, melodic death, you're gonna love this. And it does do enough to distinguish itself from At The Gates. It's definitely less melodic, more roaring death metal, screaming solos, Lovecraftian themes. But still, if you don't like At The Gates, you probably won't find much to enjoy here. Number 29, Fear Those Who Fear Him, Valen Fear. This is a side project by Greg McIntosh, the lead guitarist of Paradise Lost. But instead of him being on guitar, he's here on vocals, doing old school British death doom. Now you might think this project is a bit redundant with Paradise Lost having returned to well, their death doom sound. And I saw these guys at Damnation Festival along with Paradise Lost. And I gotta say, this is the better album. It's higher up on this list. Uh, this is just downright brutal with its slow, foreboding riffs. It's dark and dirty. And I think it's just that raw edge to it is better than Paradise Lost's is certainly more polished edge. At 28, a band I was so happy to see return to form. War is Over by the Von Hetzen Brothers, Finland's premier hard rock band. And I was a bit disappointed with the last one, A New Day Rising, uh, back in 2014, I think. But this album, this is catchy as hell, with riffs to die for. They're great, like, you gotta check Von Hetzen Brothers out if you like just good old hard rock music. Number 27. Wizard Bloody Wizard by Electric Wizard. These are the kings of doom metal, and they deliver another great record. It's not quite as in-your-face, stonery, doomy bliss as previous releases. They kind of follow the formula. They play it safe, 
but there's nothing wrong with that when you're a lecture wizard. And number 26, In Contact by Caligula's Horse. Australia's prog metal extraordinaires. They're modern, they're technical, they're melodic. They don't really differ that much to a lot of other bands in the modern prog metal scene, but it's just the execution that is brilliant. I love that last album, and this one, again, just, yeah, really captured the imagination.